On today's episode, we are joined by Dr. Liam Welfar. Liam's been a chiropractor for 13 years after graduating with honours from Murdoch University in Western Australia in 2006. Liam's been passionate about chiropractic since his own experience as a young child, where he suffered severe and frequent headaches and migraines, and the only treatment that worked after many years of agony was chiropractic. Since then, Liam has made it his mission in life to offer the same care and compassion to others as he experienced. Liam's had a wide and varied experience. He's been the team chiropractor for the Swans AFL Club, the Australian men's water polo team in the lead-up to the 2008 Beijing Olympics, and the Western Australian Institute of Sports, Gymnastics and Elite Cycling programs. These days, Liam has his own clinic in South Perth, Western Australia called Kensington Chiropractic, where he focuses on helping families and people in the community to achieve their health goals. His philosophy is simple, everyone is different, which is why he takes a tailored approach to care for each individual patient. We talked to Liam today about his experience as a child, the benefits of chiropractic treatment, his journey as a chiropractor, life as a family man, and the routines that keep him personally grounded. So hi and welcome back to The Peaks Life. And today, Mike, Mike Warren, and myself, Lynn Fernie, we're joined by Liam Welfar from Kensington Chiropractic. Welcome, Liam. Thanks for having me. Well, it's pretty exciting today because we get to talk about one of the treatment modalities that we use to keep our health and wellness in absolute tip-top condition. If you want to know what that means, it means that I want my body to move really, really well. <laughs> and this guy, Liam, is the person who makes sure that that happens. And we'll the, exciting, getting... the exciting thing is after the chat, we get to have a second. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> we'll finish the chat on the bed um, and we get to be fixed up. Straight onto it. the bed. <laughs> so re it really is exciting because, as you know, we try and bring lots of interesting information to you and you may or may not have experience at chiropractic so this is a, a real opportunity for us to just find mm. out a bit about what the heck it is and what it can do for you so without further ado let's just get into it um, Liam you're from Perth Australia right born and raised in Perth Western Australia my born family's been raised. here for a number of generations and I've lived here most of my life <laughs> awesome that's fantastic mm. and I've got to ask the, the burning question for me is yeah, why did you pick chiropractic? That's a great question. I, I became a chiropractor because it was the only thing that worked for me. When I was a young child, I suffered from quite you know, severe and debilitating headaches and migraines. Wow. We had a number of tests done. I, had, I was prodded and poked and probed <laughs> by everybody that you can imagine. And it all came back as really not showing up a great deal. The doctors eventually told my mum, there's really nothing wrong with him. There's nothing we can do. Just go away and try to manage it with painkillers, rest, dark rooms, cold flannels when I had a migraine and things. And luckily for me, my mum said, no, that's not good enough. And she kept digging. So we are talking about probably the late 80s here. And when so, mum... So how old were you then? I would have been... I would have started experiencing headaches when I was probably about six or seven. And it oh, was a okay. number of years before we were able to find anything that was wow. actually of any use. And, and how often did you get them? How long did they last, Liam? Well, often it would be multiple headaches a week. Okay. Headaches that would often develop into full-blown migraines, from what I can remember. It is mm. going back a little while now. <laughs> <laughs> but they were debilitating. I was an otherwise healthy and happy mm. and active young mm. child. And mm. on occasions, all I wanted to do was crawl up into bed, close the blinds, shut the door and have a cold flannel on my head. It was the only thing that would, wow. would get me some relief. I'd go to bed, wake up the next morning and I'd mm. be back to normal. And we searched high and low for an answer until finally my mum made an appointment with a chiropractor mm -hmm. and I went in and after one session of work on my neck, I knew that I had found the answer. Fantastic. Now that's not to say that the headaches disappeared immediately, but yes. it was such a profound change for me wow. that I knew that this was what it was. So it turned out that my headaches were neck related. We call them cervicogenic headaches. Right. And as long as the mechanics and the movement of my neck and the associated muscles are maintained and moving well and I'm yep. healthy, I no longer experience headaches. Wow. And so that's from, from amazing. That you said I want to do this for a career, is that, is that 
That's where you switched and said, this is my job? Certainly that was the foundation for yeah, that. No, it also didn't hurt that my chiropractor was always seemingly very happy <laughs> at the job as well. Okay. So when I graduated from high school yeah. and found myself uh, needing to choose what I wanted yeah. to do, university was always on the cards and I found yeah. myself doing an environmental health degree. Graduating at 21 and not feeling ready to go into an office, I thought, okay, now what? At that point, the chiropractic program was being offered here in Western Australia for the first time. Oh, so I right. wasn't going to have to travel over east. Yes. So I thought, hmm, my chiropractor has really helped me. I love going to see him. Yeah. He always seems happy. It seemed like a natural fit. See, that, that's amazing. So one, yeah. one of the things that we talk about a lot um, in many of our episodes, we talk to people about doing what you enjoy mm -hmm. and what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And just hearing that story about your chiropractor, you know, is always happy. Um, you went off to university, did something that didn't really motivate you, you weren't passionate about, and you couldn't really see yourself doing for the rest of your life, and then ended up going down a path um, to lead into something where you can help people, you love it, you get satisfaction from it every day. Mm. So much Not without better, its right? challenges. <laughs> I'm sure. Not without <laughs> its <laughs> challenges. <laughs> so I don't want to leave your background. Um, I really want to come back to that, Liam, but mm. I think it's good at this point in the episode just to explain to people what chiropractic actually is. If somebody's tuning in right now and they've never had chiropractic, they haven't heard of it, can you just sort of explain a bit about it? Well, first of all, the word chiropractic has Greek origins and it mm. simply means done by hand. So there's a lot of touch. Okay. It's a yes. manual therapy. Right. Uh, it's a man Chiropractors do concern themselves with the assessment, diagnosis, treatment and prevention of a wide range of musculoskeletal conditions. Okay. Now they can present in a number of forms from something as simple as dysfunction involving biomechanics of spinal joints, mm -hmm, yeah. muscle issues, tendon issues, but you can also deal with things like deconditioning, mm -hmm. um, postural issues, acute right. injury mm -hmm. management. There's a wide range of things that walk through the door. Okay, so when you're doing chiropractic, you're essentially manipulating the body to get alignment in the, in the, the skeleton. Is that, is that a fair sort of so assessment of what you do? Alignment of slight joint imbalances yeah. and trying to help improve the, the the range of motion and the mobility of joints which yeah. then enables the body to function as well as it can cool so think of it this way muscles move bones and they okay. do that via movable joints yep now if the <coughs> joint itself is stuck mm. with, and it mm. can become stuck or tight or locked for any number of reasons postural issues, repetitive strain type injuries, lifting incorrectly, mm -hmm. faulty biomechanic, biomechanics, congenital yeah. anomalies, any number of things, then you will end up with faulty movement patterns mm -hmm. and which yeah. can then equate to tight muscles and things yeah. like that, yeah. okay? Now, sometimes it will go the other way. Sometimes the muscle will tighten up which will actually put increased pressure on a joint and you might lose range of motion for that reason or right. you might have an imbalance within the body. We have to try to assess that and work out what do we do about it? Which one yeah. do we focus on? Is this yeah. something that needs a little bit more of a muscular uh, you know, approach or is it something that does need sort of a, a, a joint mobility approach? Mm. And that brings us to what chiropractors are famous for, which is general manipulation and typically mm. spinal manipulation. Right. But we do often work out from the, from the spine yep. and into other joints like shoulders, elbows, wrists, yep. hips, knees and ankles, yep. whatever really needs it. I kind of let what I'm finding in my assessment guide me as to where I need to go rather than going through just a standard you know, treatment protocol. Hmm. And so when somebody comes in to, to see you, Liam, and you know, they might say, well, you know, my neck's a bit sore mm. or like you, I'm getting headaches mm. or you know, my hip's a bit stiff, it's not moving as well as it, it used to be or I've, I've hurt my Achilles. Mm -hmm. How do you set out you know, to treat them? Where, where do you start with that sort of person? Well, the, the first place to start is to ask leading questions and to listen. Mm -hmm. The first thing you need to do is find out when did it start? Yep. Was there a cause or was there a trigger? What's happening day to day in their yep. life that might be leading to this becoming problematic? Because mm -hmm. If you are unable to identify the triggers, you really are not going to be particularly mm. useful in the long term. Now, yes. you may you may find that there's short-term benefit from mm. 
doing what doing what you do. But if then somebody goes back to doing the things that led to the problem in the first place, well, right. what can you expect to happen? They're going to be back in your office with the same problem over and over and over again. Yeah. So trying to figure out what's going on in that person's world that's yep. leading to that you know, leading to that problem to begin with is right. the first place to start. Yeah, that makes sense. From there, you then start to do an assessment to looking for not only the areas of the immediate concern, so don't try to be guided simply by the pain. Pain is often just a symptom and it might be coming from problems elsewhere. Right. Okay, so yeah. trying, trying to get to the bottom of what is the cause of the issue. And then figuring out what to do about it. Because mm. there's usually more than one way to get from A to B. Right. Okay. <laughs> Trying to figure out what's going to be the quickest, yes. the yes. safest, what yep. the person's expectations are. Mm. People mm. might have concerns about a f one form of therapy or they might have tried something with another therapist that maybe was less successful mm -hmm. or maybe they had great success with that but mm -hmm. they've moved or for whatever reason they yeah. can no longer see that person. Mm -hmm. So they come to you and that can guide you and say, well, if mm. that's worked before, why would we try to reinvent the wheel? Mm. Absolutely. And so um, going, going way back now again to, to university and when you sort of set out with this, you went to Murdoch Uni. Murdoch University here in Perth. Yeah, and you said it was the first time the course had been, been offered in that's Western Australia. Right. Yes, that, yeah. that's right. Prior to, that, prior to that, you had to go over, over east. So yeah. there, was, yeah. uh, there are universities in Sydney and yeah. Melbourne that offer the chiropractic course. Yes. Um, prior to that, you had to go further afield to yeah. the United States and to Canada. Wow. There are now programs uh, all over the world, New Zealand, uh, Europe. Uh, some in Asia as well. They are popping up around the place. Okay. So it's going, going to be probably be seeing more chiropractors. Uh, That's around. interesting. Mm. So it's actually it's, it's a growing profession. Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. interesting. Mm. So, so you did your, your degree. How long is the degree? It's a five-year program. Oh, that's pretty expensive, uh, right? Oh, yes, yeah. yes, it is a five-year program. So you've done the other, the other degree before, too? You've, that's right. You spent a chunk of time at uni. Nine years in total. <laughs> wow. It was wow. one of my concerns initially was, okay, now all of my friends who I started with are going to be going out there and getting yeah, jobs sure. and doing, yeah. you know, getting, you know, real wages and yes. doing things like buying cars and houses and going on holidays. And I'm thinking I'm going to go back to being a university student for another five years. Yeah. But I'm, I'm always thankful that I had the foresight at that moment to realize to, to worry about where I was going to be at 35 right. as opposed to 25 and yep. thinking where, where do I see myself yep. and I'm and I'm and I'm very pleased that I feel I made the right decision and, and that's so good because again we, we say to people a lot this is a long game your career is going to take you you know take you for perhaps 50 years mm -hmm. So if it takes you another couple of years to make up your mind, find you what you want to do, do the studies, get yourself set up, mm. what's three, four, five years in the next 50? Yeah. And obviously it's paid off for you, right? Yeah, I'm happy. Great. That's mm. very cool. So then where did the journey take you? Finished uni? Did you practice in Perth or you went further afield? Well, I was fortunate enough to graduate with honours and I... Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I thought I'd just mention that. <laughs> Throw that in. <laughs> And I found work immediately with a, a gentleman in who was working in Claremont, and, and, which is a suburb here in Western Australia, and I started working with him and I observed with him for a number of, of weeks and I thought, yep, great, and I started sort of treating on my own and within about three weeks he came in with both hands in casts saying, I'm really sorry, I've had a really nasty <laughs> fall, I've broken both of my wrists. Wow. And that being an older gentleman, he decided that was a good time to retire. <laughs> That's not sign. ideal, is it? <laughs> he did say, you're welcome to make an offer to buy the practice, but having been a graduate for all of about a month, I thought that that was probably not a sensible approach to go out there on my own and start my own thing. So no, I stepped away from that opportunity and I found work at a very busy multidisciplinary clinic uh, at a, another practice, where I, which was a great opportunity. It was a great experience. I worked there for four years and it was as part of a large team. There was a, a number of chiro, I think there were two or three chiropractors. Right. There was a physiotherapist, remedial massage therapist, yep. occupational therapist, podiatrist. Uh, we ended up having people coming in and teaching Pilates and yoga, and, right. and, and and all. You know, it really gave me an insight into what other 
manual therapy and physical therapists what their approach might be because sometimes these problems don't just have a simple answer mm, if right. they did we'd all be doing it yeah. you know yeah. both as practitioners and as clients and patients 100%. Okay? so I, i'm that gave me a really good opportunity to say you know what i am just part of the greater whole mm -hmm. and, you know i'm I, I i'm a i want to be i strive to be a useful part for mm -hmm. most people but i also am not really I suppose you could say naive enough to think that I'm the be all and end all or chiropractic is the be all and end all. Even within chiropractic, I don't know everything about chiropractic. Yeah. So there are other chiropractors out there that will have techniques and tips and yeah. you know t styles of practice that they do yeah. that might be beneficial for others when I'm hitting a, a, a dead end. And I think that, that's something special that you bring to, to this, Liam, is that you you will say to somebody, I've done as much as I can, mm. but there's another, you know, you'd be better now getting some more massage or you might be better seeing a mm. physio or I recommend you do something else. So rather than trying to just keep all that business, mm. you'll happily, you know, say to somebody, I've, I've done my bit, mm. um, now go and see another practitioner so that you're getting that real holistic wellness for, for your clients, right? I, I really... I really do strive to have a patient-centered model mm -hmm. of care, which is if you're not in the right place, mm -hmm. let me help guide you where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Now, I might have a general understanding about other areas that perhaps aren't my forte, mm -hmm. but if you've come into me with recent shoulder surgery, Yes, I know the rehab protocols that would probably be useful, but it's not my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would prefer at you at that point to go and find a really good physiotherapist mm. or somebody else who will actually help guide you through that that issue at the yeah. time. Yeah. I think, I think what I love, this is just personal, I've been to a lot of practitioners who fix the problem and they do the treatment. But you're 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 wonderful in the way you educate. Oh, so every time thank you. we come here, it's yeah. not just you treat, but you're telling us what you're doing, why you're doing it. So you've been fixed, but you actually understand the process that's gone through. Mm. It's, it's it's a really good experience. Absolutely yeah. right. I do that for a couple of reasons. One, it's all well and good me knowing what I'm doing, yes. but sometimes what I'm doing might actually seem a little bit odd to the person who's <laughs> laying on the table yeah, and yeah. thinking they're sitting there thinking, what's he doing? Yes. Mm. So for a start, I like to have that explained. Mm. And then, of course, the next question is, and why is he doing it? What's the yes. goal? Yeah. Yes. What's yeah. the goal of you digging into my shoulder and causing yeah. me pain? Why are you doing that? Mm. Okay. Does the client you relax because you understand the process, you understand where you're coming from, why you're doing it, yeah. and you get the big picture, not just you're not laying there in silence, mm. being manipulated with no understanding of what's going on. And then following on from that, yeah. that also gives you the opportunity to take that information away mm -hmm. and say, well, hey, I can now use this day to day mm -hmm. in the yeah. other 23 and a half hours of my mm -hmm. day mm -hmm. and the rest of the week and the rest of the month and the rest of the year and so on for sure that means that maybe i can help avoid these problems to begin with exactly as right. well 100 right? so. and we're all about prevention mm -hmm. right because if you can prevent it you know put us out of a job that's great we, <laughs> we, we actually don't mind we just want people to be well and fit yeah. and healthy um you know and not need treatment at Absolutely. the end of the day so so cool so i'm, I'm going to bring us back again to you know your story because you know you, you worked in that multidisciplinary clinic mm. and that allowed you to get a real overview of, of everything to do with you know the physical body and the, the treatment of. Um, but you didn't stay there, you, you moved on from there, there was another step, so yes, what that's, was that? That's right, um, I feel like we were just getting too comfortable. My wife and I, <laughs> my, my, my wife had a, a wonderful job in the local children's hospital in biomedical research. She was working away, toiling away in the lab and I had my little place in the world at the clinic that I was at and things were going, swimmingly and we but we did have a a, a a bit of a travel bug and we really wanted to go and do it so it was a little bit of a leap into the unknown but we uh, both resigned and we got a one-way ticket and we thought let's just go and off we go we're going to travel we're going to travel until we the money runs out and we need to come home and we'll pick up where we left off well what we anticipated to be a 12 month around the world journey ended up being closer to a four year around the world journey <laughs> because we were able to find jobs. So I was fortunate enough to land a chiropractic position in the Cayman Islands, okay. in the Caribbean. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> wasn't it, wasn't it? No, it was, you know, look, it was, it was wonderful. It really, you know, it is, you know, postcard, picture perfect, mm, white yes. sandy beaches, warm blue water, yeah. scuba diving, palm trees, Amazing. beach volleyball, boat yeah. trips, that kind of thing. Um, but 
you know, having done that for the better part of two years, Karen and I decided that it was time to, to leave the fantasy world and come home. That was for family reasons. You know, mm. people are pretty rude. They continue on with their lives when you're away. And, mm. you know, things like Karen's brother meeting a girl and building a house and having a baby mm-hmm. and getting engaged. And that, that was all happening and we weren't there for it. And yeah. Ultimately, the, the, the lure of coming back for family brought us home. Which, and families, you know, really important. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, understand that. Curious to, to hear a bit about the sort of clients that you had in the Cayman Islands. What was it like treating people there? Well, the Cayman Islands is very, very famous for money, mm-hmm. obviously. And the people that have money need people to look after their money and those people are generally accountants and lawyers so a high proportion of the people the expats particularly that are living and working in the Cayman Islands are accountants and lawyers and accountants and lawyers tend to sit at desks in front of computers and on the phone for hours and hours on end so that was a lot of the clientele okay that was a lot of the clientele interesting so different to different to Perth Oh, probably a little bit more um, homogenous. You know, there was probably a little bit more of uh, the one type of clientele as opposed to the broader range that you get here in a in a, a normal sort of mid-sized to large city. Yep. As well. Okay, and so then you came back to mm-hmm. Perth, and uh, what then, Liam? Uh, I rang some friends that I studied <laughs> with, and I said, I need a job. <laughs> I've run out of money. <laughs> what a good sunset. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I, I was offered the position that I'd left, but it was one of those situations where after four years away, I really mm. thought I'm going to step back into the same environment, the same four mm. walls yeah, and yeah, things, yeah. and it was going to almost just feel like, you know, not so much a backward step. I loved the place. I loved the environment, but I was ready for another new challenge. Mm. Uh, and I found a job with a friend of mine who had a, a city-based practice, but mm. also a number of satellite clinics out in the wheat belt. Uh-huh. So. The wheat belt, for those that aren't uh, from Western Australia that yep. may be watching and listening, is uh, is our rural communities, oh. a number of hours away inland from, from the coast here on in Western Australia. And that took me to a number of the communities which are primarily farming communities, right. which we would just go in and, and work for sometimes a day a week, which presents its challenges. It's not mm. ideal. Sometimes people need something a little bit more frequent. Yeah. Or if we're there on a Monday and you hurt yourself on a Tuesday or something like that, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, you have to wait. Yes. Or by all means, yeah. you're welcome to drive down to the city to see us there but right. sometimes that creates challenges and hurdles yeah um, but that was that was fascinating as well that's mm-hmm. that's a matter of you know seeing people now that are out there working manual jobs mm-hmm. primarily yeah. working on the land in challenging circumstances yeah. long hours um, you know some some quite severe cases that perhaps you don't see in, mm-hmm. in more of an urban setting certainly not as frequently yeah, so ve- very, very different, mm. um, I would imagine, in terms of the, the type of issues that you're dealing with and treating, right? And management protocols mm. as a result. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. Yeah. So you did that for a while. Yes. And, um, you also worked with some pretty high-performing teams around mm-hmm. that time, didn't mm-hmm. you? Yeah, I've been, I've been lucky enough to be involved with a number of uh, organisations that are, you know, pushing, you know, pushing the elite level. So I've worked with, I worked, was fortunate to work with the men's, uh, water polo team prior to the Beijing Olympics. Right. So they, they use their Perth as their training base. Perth has quite a large water polo community and they were using their uh, oh, nice. Perth as the training base and oh. I, they, they reached out to um, the clinic that I was at at the time and said, look, would you guys be you know happy to come on board? Which of course we were and that was great. Um, cool. I've worked with the West Australian Institute of Sport with their cycling and gymnastics programs, right. uh, a number of uh, waffle level, which is the, the local elite level, one step below the AFL level, mm-hmm. sort of a feeder program for the AFL right. um, with, with their team for four years, uh, which you know involved working with a number of individuals that went on to become mm-hmm. some of the well-known names in the AFL. Um, system at the moment and right. things like that. So I have had that opportunity yeah. to, to do that as well as individuals that have just come to me on their own accord that mm. are, I've just had an individual who's just completed the Hawaiian Ironman, which is wow. the wow. the full length 3.8 kilometre, <laughs> 180 kilometre swim, the 180 yeah. kilometre cycle and right. follow, followed by a marathon <laughs> after all that in, in 90% humidity Absolutely. and 30 degree weather wow. with strong howling winds and yes, yeah, so... Uh, He's, he's just finished that in 10 hours and 15 minutes, an amazing achievement. And Gee, just to be able to help 
in, in his journey mm. and to be part of what, you know, the, the, the treatment and things that he needed to get to the start line mm. and, and I suppose indeed to the finish line yeah. um, is, is always very rewarding. So what's the difference when you're treating an elite athlete mm. or a professional athlete? What's the difference, you know, in terms of just the way that they approach it and the contribution that you're making? Um, I tend to try not to view it as a difference. I'm still treating the individual mm -hmm. in front of me and yeah. just because their goals might be qualifying for an Olympics mm -hmm. or making a career out of, out of their sport doesn't mean that I put any more effort or focus into their care as opposed yeah. to not the general public that mm -hmm. comes in because, you know, Joe Public walks through the door and it's just as important for him to be able to you know, work and, mm -hmm. and, and feel good and, yeah. and, and, and get to work on the yeah. day and things mm. like that. So I really do try to separate myself from what the goals of the individual are yeah. because my real goal is to try to get people operating at close to or at their potential. Yeah. And, that's, and that's an awesome goal, right? Because it doesn't matter who walks through your door, mm. you can always help them achieve that potential, right? <laughs> anything from we can't all be Michael Phelps and mm. anticipate mm. that they're going to win multiple Olympic gold medals right. okay but we can try to help those individuals achieve that goal absolutely yeah. right. we certainly know that their competition is getting that assistance as well so we yes. might as well yes. do our best for the individual in front of us absolutely. but one of my greatest success stories that really sort of warmed my heart then and now was when I had a lovely couple that came in and they were husband and wife mm. came through the door and they were both over 90 years old. Over 90? Over 90. They had wow. been married for nearly 70 years at the time <laughs> and she was quite distressed and upset because she'd been, you know, was reaching a point where she thought she was going to have to go into a nursing home or a higher care facility. Right. And primarily that was because she wasn't able to do very simple things like hanging out the washing, reaching into the cupboards to get down plates and cups and things right. like that. And it just got to the point where the family said, you really need to go in somewhere where you can get more help. Mm. Well, the same things happened, the same questions, the same assessments, and yeah. then a modified treatment program meant that we were able to get her range of motion, particularly through the shoulders and the arms, back to a point where she would come in from having had mo range of motion only probably in the 10 to 20% mm. range, she would come in within weeks and throw her hands up over her <laughs> head and say, look at what I can do. Now, I worked with that lady for a number of years just mm -hmm. to keep her going as best that I could. And by the time that I left, which was prior to going on that, that travel, the travel experience that I had, mm -hmm. she was still at home with her husband and that had been three years later. How awesome. So it's yeah, age 90 and you were still able to keep her at home doing what she loved with a husband of mm -hmm. 70 years. That's an amazing Very story. modified treatment program. You're yeah. probably at that point not going to do a heavy spinal manipulative yeah. therapy mm -hmm. on that individual. Yeah. You might have issues mm -hmm. with regarding bone thinning or osteoporosis. You, mm -hmm. might, have, uh, you might have osteoarthritis or right. other forms of bone deformity that probably wouldn't respond particularly mm. well to yeah. um, spinal manipulation Absolutely. or chiropractic adjustments, but yeah. mobilization, soft right. tissue therapy, yeah. uh, modified exercises that the individual can do at home, as well as activity modification that, you know, tips and tricks mm. that they mm. can do at home right. works just as well for 90 year olds as it does for mm. 21 year old aspiring Olympians. That's, and that's amazing, is it? The fact that you can treat anybody from an elite professional athlete through to somebody who's 90 and struggling with range of motion um, is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And people probably don't realise that, but you know, it is a very varied um, treatment option and it really can help, you know, like we said, keep you in tip top condition mm -hmm. and yeah. do the most you possibly can. And I think it's segue into that because a lot of people who are tuning in, it's, you've explained in detail. Um, chiropractic, what, what the practice is, what you focus on. But there's people tuning in who just, they have an ache or a pain or they have a problem. And they may, have, they may be now sitting there thinking, okay, is it a physio, an osteo, a chiro, a doctor? They've got a choice of health professionals mm. to choose. So if they're sitting there with an ache or a pain or something that's causing them discomfort, and I said, here's the top three benefits of choosing a chiropractor mm. as the choice to go to, how would you articulate those benefits that a chiropractic brings to the table versus maybe some of the other disciplines mm. that might be considering? 
It's a great question, and it's really it's, it, a, it's a it's a it's a tough one. Yeah, yeah. It's a tough one for every individual to ask themselves because yes. people may not have that background knowledge about yeah. hey, what what is the difference there? And I'll start by saying that for for the manual therapies, there is a, actually often a lot of overlap. Okay, okay? Yes. so you, yep. you you may find that there are physiotherapists that mm -hmm. are doing a wonderful job that may actually implement a little bit of manipulative therapy as well. There yep. are now a lot of chiropractors that are moving away from the standard manipulative therapy mm -hmm. and into more of the soft tissue techniques and rehabilitation right. techniques exercises and stretches and things like that so mm -hmm. you oftentimes it is about just finding the right person for you mm -hmm. and the difficulty there can be that it can be a little bit of hit and miss right. sometimes you yeah. might hit a dead end with somebody but if that yeah. individual is uh, listening to your needs and concerns if that person is uh, helping guide you and is not just doing one approach and saying no this is it this is it this is it and you find yourself just hitting those dead ends or banging your heads against the wall if you found somebody like that they should be able to help guide you to where you need to be yeah. uh, pain is what brings most people to a chiropractor <laughs> yeah, to begin with yeah, okay yeah, yeah, but pain yeah. is Pain is the end result of yes. dysfunction. Our yes. bodies generally aren't in pain if they're functioning well. Right. So although pain control is uh, what brings people into the office, it's generally not my focus of treatment. There may be in the, that acute phase. So if somebody yeah, comes okay. in and they have a sustained an acute injury, yep. the answer may be you're in the wrong place, you need to go to the doctor and you need to get some prescription painkillers. Okay. You might need to go to the hospital in certain right. cases and get, yes. get, get an injection because yes. it might be severe enough. Okay. Uh, ice might be the answer, heat yeah. might be the answer. So the initial acute phase of care may yeah, very much okay. be pain related but once the pain is under control right. settling down and things the focus shifts towards what do we do to treat the underlying dysfunction yep. and then what do we do to tr to prevent this sort of thing from mm. just happening again or becoming chronic okay okay so pain brings people in yep but it's the improved function okay. that will keep people mm. coming back yeah okay so after people start to realize hey it doesn't need to be this way yes i don't have to right. have that decreased cervical rotation right. i don't need to have that difficulty getting out of bed in the morning i don't need to have that constant pain which means that i'm taking half a dozen mm painkillers right. every day just to function yep. okay yeah. and that's without even touching on some of the negative side effects that do come with right. having long-term you know you know painkiller uh, ingestion yeah. uh, or or some of the problems that can develop because of untreated or undiagnosed issues that can yeah. lead to premature degenerative changes yeah. and problems in that regard. So if people are you know people are suffering acute pain or they've had long-term pain um, or like you said things are just not moving as well as mm -hmm. they're used to all of these are, are reasons for them to come along and potentially all of those could be resolved through a treatment program? Well, we'd open a dialogue, wouldn't mm. we? And mm. we would start to assess yes. what somebody needs. Now that can sometimes mean, well, hold on, I'm not touching you until we've got some advanced imaging, mm -hmm. some of which are not open to chiropractors yep. referring for. So I might say to you, no, no, Lynn, you need to go and see your GP. Right. And what I suggest you do is get their opinion. Firstly, yep. I'm not trying to put words into their mouth and say what they should do. They mm. are also in incredibly knowledgeable about mm. what you need. Yep. but. You, know, you might suggest and say, hey, this could be something that might be useful. It might mm. be an ultrasound, a CAT scan, an MRI, these types yep. of things. Helps just put the, complete the picture. Yeah, and then okay. you can use that in the And then I can use that right. information to say, yeah. right, well, this is an area we need to focus on. That mm. might be an area we should leave alone. Mm. Mm. Yep. The first thing I want to do is make sure I'm not doing anything that might doing make you harm. worse. Right, mm. absolutely right. Okay. So so then we look, look into the future. This mm. is, so being a chiropractor and being, it's a, it's a very manual trade. You've yes. Seen, you know, the, the word chiropractor comes from using the hand. So if you looked into the future and said with the advancements of technology, you're a young guy with a successful practice in a growing area. Mm. What do you see the practice looking like in 5, 10, 15 years and how does technology play into how you're going to operate? It's always dangerous to predict yeah, the yeah. future, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, 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 yeah the, <laughs> my hope. I can yes. speak about my hope. My yes. hope. My hope is that advancements in technology make uh, you know lead to better outcomes for mm. clients and yeah. individuals. Make you know if it can make my job easier right. with regards to assessment and yeah. measurement and yeah. diagnosis yeah, and things okay. like that. Well, yeah. all that will do is benefit the mm. client. Yeah. Okay. And that's all it's going to do. Now, I, I can't see 
the manual therapy is being replaced by robots or anything like that. Mm. I think touch yeah. is very incredibly mm. important. I yeah. think having a, a, a sympathetic and an empathetic ear is mm -hmm. very important. Yes. Listening mm. is very important. Yeah. But there are wonderful tools out there now with the advancements in the internet and things, anybody really can access a lot of information. You've mm. just got to, I, I suppose one of the difficulties is trying to sift through what's the useful information <laughs> yeah. and what stuff that's perhaps a little less yeah, useful. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and that's where somebody, you know, a, a, a good therapist, a good chiropractor yeah. will will help guide you. Absolutely. Guide right. you through that. Yeah, and you're right, there's so much information out there, it really is difficult to know what to trust, right? Mm -hmm. And I think some of the things that you've talked about there with you know, when you're selecting a chiropractor to, to work with or a manual therapist to work with or a practitioner of any kind, mm -hmm. some of the things that are really important to look for that they're not only going to have one treatment protocol, one size fits everyone, it should be, they should be prepared to modify and adopt different approaches, they should be able to listen and mm -hmm. tailor a treatment to you. Um, it applies today when you're selecting a chiropractor and it'll apply in the future, mm -hmm. even as, you know, the, the internet expands and we get more and more information, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, I think, you know, it's, it's a really fascinating area because we've got that mix of technology and manual therapy. So we're sort of putting those together and looking for, you know, what's the best approach. And I can see us having artificial intelligence, you know, body scanning systems mm -hmm. that somebody can walk in and say, look, here's, here's what you know, the, the scans are telling me, yes. but they haven't had to go to a, a hospital yes. to get a scan. Yes. It's all happened, you know, because the, the technology's become really affordable. And then you can look at that and say, right, that's great, because I know exactly what to do now. Wouldn't it be great? Oh, yeah. wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> I reckon five years time. Yeah. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm betting yeah. five years. <laughs> I mean, they are just tools to support your treatment. Mm -hmm. They don't replace the treatment. Mm. No. And I, I can't see a time where anything's going to replace your hands and your ability mm. to diagnose and understand and treat. But if you've got all this technology supporting you to get to the problem faster, that's obviously going to help. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, I do, I think touch is important. Yeah. I think yeah. feel is um. important. I think human connection is important. Mm. There may reach a time when the technology does catch up to mm. the point where it may, I, I'm not sure. I yes. don't know that it would be in our lifetimes, but mm -hmm. hey, who knows? Yep. Um, but I do think that just having somebody sit down, listen, touch and just use use feel to mm. to help take you to where you need to be mm. is is going to, is really important and I just can't see it changing mm. yeah. in the in the near future. I have a real belief in you know the body and the energy systems and the touch and I think a really good practitioner can almost you know by touch um, not even with, you know not even manipulation but almost hone in on the problems mm -hmm. yeah. um, without having any other information to, to go from. Um, and certainly, you know, that's been our experience with, with you, Liam, is that you're able to, to pinpoint things mm. very, very quickly. Which I guess brings me to another question for you, which is that you got to a point in time where you decided it was time to have your own business and, you know, not to go and work for other people. So you've, you, you're now here at Kensington Chiropractic. So just tell us a bit about the, um, the clinic. Uh, the clinic itself has been established for 20 years and in that time it's actually passed through, I think I might be the fourth set of hands mm -hmm. that it's come to. Uh, the lady that operated the clinic prior to me, she was from Canada and she decided to move back to Canada after 12 okay. years of running the business for, for, for her own family reasons. And that meant that, uh, you know, the, the clinic became available. I live locally and it was a, the right time for me to sort of jump in and, and do something closer to home and mm -hmm. uh, gave me the opportunity to come in and sort of do things my mm -hmm. way, rightly or wrongly. Mm -hmm. The buck stops with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and, and so I've now been here for about 12 months. Mm -hmm. And so a bit of a curveball mm. question, Liam. Um, what's it like being a business owner now? Well, there's a lot of things that they don't teach you in chiropractic school okay so we, we 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 go to we go to university and we go there and we learn to be a chiropractor we don't learn to be a people manager we don't learn to run the books we yes. don't learn to do websites and <laughs> blogs and advertising yes. and pay bills and <laughs> all of those media. kinds of all of that you know so you know what, what my focus is all is and always will be on what happens on the treatment table yeah. but now you know in my you know in my spare time haha -ha, what's that <laughs> I, I now do a lot of sort of working on the business as opposed yeah. to working in the business. Yeah. Working as an associate uh, had 
the the, advan the advantage mm. of being able to just come in, do your job, do it well, yeah. go home. Yeah. And if the alarm went off at three o'clock in the morning, well, that was somebody else's problem, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> Had the disadvantage of sometimes needing to fit into other people's way of doing things, mm -hmm. which perhaps didn't you know, always agree with you or you could see ways that you might do it differently. Again, yep. not that one's right and one's wrong, but we all have individual preferences. This gives me uh, the ability to, you know, indulge those preferences. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And I, and I think, you know, there's something lovely about running your own business because like you said, you can, you can decide on the direction. Mm. Um, but if you're the sort of person who really enjoys the, the, the job itself, it's also important to make sure that you can, you can continue giving the treatment and working with people directly, right? Yes, all right. So we talked a lot about what you do for others. Mm. So you've got a young family. That's all right. You've got a growing business. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope. Tell us, take us behind the scenes to, to what does Liam do in the background? What's your wellness routine? What keeps you grounded? What makes you able to give 100% to your patients? Um, what do you do to make sure that you're in tip-top condition? Well, it starts with taking my own advice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's trying, it, it, like, like, like everybody, I'm no different. Chiropractors aren't immune to yes. back problems and, and, and aches and pains oh. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, many of us come to the profession with a story like mine, which is yeah. we had a problem that mm -hmm. was corrected via chiropractic. So yeah. many of us out there doing the job have backs that maybe aren't as strong or as good as they, they should be. And so we need to continue to work on that as well because yep. ultimately if I'm unable to physically perform my job, if I'm yep. not looking after myself, I'm actually unable to look after others. Yep. So I do, have to, I do have to look after myself and I do that by making time to you know, do the right thing, try mm. training. Mm. Yep. I do a lot of a lot of running. Mm. I make sure that I'm trying to stay fit. Mm. I eat as well as I can. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, not as well as <laughs> I should, but I I do I do try. Make a lot of you know, rest. Rest is important. Mm. Mm -hmm. we, we know sleep is sleep, important. Yeah. Fun is important. Yeah. You know, yeah, making time fun. making time for family is important. All of Absolutely. all of these things. I mean, we're all constantly being pulled in different directions. Yeah. But if 100%. you guys have you guys have really been able to articulate to me that if you focus on you know what what matters most mm. you can you can really find that you're not making time it time just happens for those things doesn't Absolutely. it Absolutely. when you've got a four-year-old <laughs> you know that's you have to chase around he's a lot of fun and when you've got a wife who's studying a PhD in yeah. cockatoo ecology and these kinds of things you do yeah. find that time management is yeah. is yeah. challenging but uh, you know ultimately we we do our best and mm. we, we generally get there in the end absolutely mm. and it's all about balance mm -hmm. right yeah. I, just said, I, I love the fact you mentioned the word fun because having some fun spending time with the family mm. and getting that balance is, is super important. Mm. Yes, it is. Well, it's been a fascinating insight. It certainly has. We, we obviously know you professionally. We yes. come here regularly and we'll continue to come here for a long time because we love coming here. We do. It's been fascinating to actually see behind the scenes, understand, first of all, your passion, which is exciting to see how you started and what brought you here, mm -hmm. but then learning mm -hmm. about what you do and how you do it and understanding, you know, when we don't see you, there's a whole bunch of things you have to do to stay well, yes. to stay strong, to stay focused, to be able to deliver the, the treatment you deliver to us. That's it's it. It is. So I think, you know, just, just to wrap it up and, you know, to say thanks mm. to you, Liam, thanks both for our treatment because my experience as a CrossFitter is that I do get injured and I do suffer problems every now and then and, you know, I hurt my back last week. Um, and I also do a lot of, I'm a bit of a keyboard warrior, so I sit up for long hours mm. at, you know, at my desk, I travel a lot, mm. so my back gets quite deconditioned. So for me, it's super important to have somebody like you, Liam, who'll listen to my story, who'll really focus on understanding what's going on in my life, and will treat in the best way that you possibly can. Mm. And certainly in the last, what has it been now, six to eight months um, that you've been working with me, um, my condition has improved dramatically. My performance in the gym has improved dramatically. We've seen some PBs, haven't and we? I have hit lots and lots of PBs, lots of personal bests. Isn't that great? And yeah. you know that that's down to you. So for anybody who's tuning mm. in, um, and if you're thinking about, you know, what do I do to keep my body in tip-top condition? Mm. Got a few aches and pains. I encourage you to see a chiropractor. Think about what we've talked about today. How do you pick a good chiropractor? You want somebody like Liam, who's really thinking about you and getting you to, the, to that point where you're gonna hit your potential. Um, and if you're in the, the Perth area, then come and see Liam, because he's at Kensington Chiropractic, and we can pretty much guarantee you an awesome experience.